All right, time now for Consumer Confidential with KTLA 5's David Lazarus. Yeah, we are talking about the GDP. It's up. It is up, and that's a sign the economy is doing well, but there's a mixed bag. Let me get back to that in a moment. The headline today, gross domestic product rising at an annual rate of 2.9% in the fourth quarter of last year, showing that as we wrote, reached the end of the year, the economy was just putting in a solid performance. That compares to a 3.2% GDP growth rate in the third quarter. Now, what this tells us that months of interest rate increases are having the desired effect of slowing down the economy and bringing down inflation, but not too much. It looks like that soft landing that the Fed was looking for is gradually taking shape. But as I say, there's some red flags here. First of all, the labor market is remaining fairly resilient, even though we've seen a flurry of recent layoffs, especially in the tech sector. Overall, the labor market remains fairly tight. And that's a factor primarily of consumer spending still going up. We've talked about how consumer spending is the fuel that, that makes the economy go. Well, in the fourth quarter, consumer spending was up by 2 0.1%. However, we know from rising household debt and rising credit card balances that more and more consumers are putting their spending on plastic. That is clearly unsustainable. And at some point, consumers will pull back. And when they do, that indicates that perhaps the labor market will start to become a little more tetchy and we will see the economy starting to head southward as a result. And that's why there's still a betting line that a recession, albeit a mild one, is going to come later this year. All right, Southwest, uh, no surprise, reporting a huge quarterly loss because of the recent flight meltdown at the end of last year. You, you saw this one coming, and today we got the news, Southwest saying they lost $220 million over the last three months of last year as a result of that massive holiday meltdown that affected roughly 2 million passengers. It's a big deal. The carrier says that it expects to also post a loss in the current quarter as it digs its way out from all of this. CEO Bob Jordan once again apologized to Southwest <clears throat> passengers saying, oops, my bad, and said that the, the, the airline is working very hard to prevent this from ever happening again. Nevertheless, yesterday the Department of Transportation announced that it has launched what it calls a rigorous investigation of the Southwest meltdown. Southwest, for its part, says it will cooperate with authorities in looking into it. At last check, Southwest stock down about 4% today. All right, and what financial feathers being ruffled at Peacock? Back to that. Today, Peacock, which is the streaming arm of Comcast's NBC Universal, reported that subscriber numbers in the most recent quarter were up, revenue was up, but profit, no, not so much. Nowhere to be found. In fact, Peacock is forecasting that it will lose about $3 billion this year, and it's not alone. Most of the big streamers, including Disney Plus, say that they are losing money as they invest huge amounts of, uh, of millions into new content, and they need the content to attract people. So you've got a business model now that isn't quite penciling out. On the one hand, yes, there's growth, which we've been seeing since the pandemic. At the same time, the monthly rates aren't high enough to cover that overhead. What does that mean? Most analysts say, obviously, this is going to mean rate hikes. HBO Max, for example, was charging 15 bucks a month for its ad-free service. Now it's charging 16 bucks a month. Many analysts say all the big streamers are going to eventually target $20 a month as the price, but obviously that's not going to sit well with consumers. If you go to KTLA.com, I'll have some, some tips on how you can navigate a pricier streaming landscape.